This chapter is an introduction to the basics of lighting in 3ds Max. We'll use the loft apartment set here to illustrate interior artificial lighting, and we'll also set up a sun and sky for interior natural light or daylighting. We'll go ahead and create a light, go over to the Create panel, and in the categories, choose Lights. There's a pull-down list here that's labeled Photometric. And if you select that pull-down list, you'll see that there are three types of lights in 3ds Max. Standard lights, such as Omni and Skylight, really only work with the Scanline renderer. And this is a prior generation of 3D graphics technology. And it's not well suited to photorealism because standard lights do not obey physical laws. They're purely impressionistic or cartoon lighting. If you want photoreal results, then choose one of the other categories of lights. Arnold lights, as the name indicates, will only render in the Arnold renderer. Photometric lights will render in pretty much any renderer. Let's go for photometric. We see in the object type pull-down, there are three lights listed. Target light, free light, and sun positioner. Well, actually, there are really only two types of lights here because target light and free light are the same thing. Once you've created it, you can convert it to the other type of light at any time. Sun positioner is a method for creating natural daylight with a sun and sky. Let's create a free light. Click on the free light button and we get a pop-up dialog. Photometric light creation. You are creating a photometric light. It is recommended that you use the logarithmic exposure control. Would you like to change this now? What does this mean? Well, just like in the real world, we need to set an exposure for the camera. We need to control how much light is reaching the sensor in our virtual camera. Because photometric lights are capable of reproducing the intensities of lights in the real world. And if we didn't have exposure control to adjust the brightness of our rendering, then we would have a great deal of difficulty getting photorealistic results, even with photometric lights. So generally speaking, you do want to have exposure control enabled when using photometric lights. However, in this course, we're not gonna be using the logarithmic exposure control. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, no, I'm not going to change this now. We'll deal with that situation later. Click on no. And I wanna create the light here in the top viewport. That way I'll be able to position it in a plan view and then I'll move it up in a front or perspective view. I'll click just once right on top of that lamp and the photometric light has been created. I'll right click to exit creation tool, grab the move tool and pull that up in the front or perspective views. Right click in the view to select the view without losing the selection and then pull that light upward. Let's do a test rendering. Go over to the perspective view and we'll do a render of that view. So I've selected it and so it's highlighted. And on the far right of the main toolbar, I have some render buttons. It won't fit in my capture area. So I'm gonna slide the main toolbar over and click on render production, which is a teapot with a lightning bolt. And this is going to render in the default scanline renderer. It's not going to look very good, but we just want to make sure that light is actually going into the scene. Okay, I'll close that. And in the perspective view over here, I'll turn on shaded mode with F3. And we can see that the light is there, but we're not yet able to see the lighting in the viewport until we change up our display settings. In the following movie, we'll adjust the viewport quality in order to approximate the lighting in the scene. And that's how to create photometric lights.